Okay, today we will continue our uh, talk about the plane radiographs for the rapid reporting section and uh, some also for the viva preparation. I hope it will help you. Today we will talk about the spine and pelvis. Uh, again, uh, as we said in the last uh, lecture, that uh, as a radiologist, you need to be um, uh, more concerned with the details for the radiographs, not only for the obvious fractures and obvious abnormalities, and also you should train yourself to make your own checklist and you, uh, your own scheme uh, for viewing each radiograph. And uh, you should also be aware of your weak points and you train on it. And you should uh, see as much as you can for uh, of the radiographs to train your eye to catch the abnormalities uh, fast. Our content today, we'll talk about the spine first on the cervical, then thoracic, then lumbar vertebrae. Uh, and at last, we will talk about the pelvis briefly. Uh, this will be a, a rapid review. Uh, we will not cover all the things, all the pathologies, it is hard to do. So you should uh, go by yourself to the books and the websites and train uh, yourself more. Okay, our friends today will be the alignment of the vertebrae. Uh, every, every study we will see there is three lines we, sh we should track the anterior and the middle and posterior lines. We should also trace every cortex for each uh, uh, bone. And uh, the most important thing for the emergency cases we would check for the stability uh, and spinal cord affection. We will start by the cervical spine. This is a, a brief anatomy. The, this one is the C1 and C2 vertebrae. Uh, this is uh, the gold standard in the cervical radiograph. We should check in every one. Uh, here you see in the lateral view, this is the C1, the anterior arch of C1 has a, a bean shape. And this is the posterior arch. Then this uh, is the C2. It has an elongated process named the big. Uh, the distance between the big and the anterior arch of C1 should not be more than three millimeter in adults and five millimeters in children. You should also trace the anterior part and the posterior part of this pig. There is no cortical steps or any fractures. You should also check the uh, what is called Harris ring here. This one I will show you on the plane radiograph itself. Uh, this one should be intact, not fractured. Okay. This is the frontal view of the C1 and C2 vertebrae. This is the C2 and this is the dense. This is the lateral masses of C1. You, you, you know this is the uh, lateral line between the lateral mass of C1 and the lateral part of C2. It should be aligned together, no steps. And the distance between the lateral masses of C1 and the dense should be uh, equal, but sometimes it is not equal. Not exactly equal, but no problem. Here is on the plane radiograph, the anatomy again. This is the C1, this is the coffee bean of the anterior arch of C1. This is the dense of C2, and this is the Harris ring. See, it is intact here. It should be intact in all the radiographs. And this is the alignment of C2, C3. This is the hyoid bone and soft tissue. This is again the frontal view or open mouth view of C1 and C2. This is the lateral mass. This is the big. And you know, this is aligned on laterally, no steps. This is the alignment of the old cervical vertebrae. This is the anterior longitudinal line and posterior longitudinal line and spinolaminar line. We all are here. This is the prevertebral soft tissue space. Till the C4, it should be only uh, less than seven millimeters. 
from C5 to C7, it can be uh, up to 22 millimeters. And this is also detailed anatomy for the radiograph. This is the facet joint, and this is the lateral mass. Okay. Take care for each uh, cervical radiograph. You should, uh, as we said in the last uh, lecture also, you, you should trace every cortex. Here, uh, you can detect a mandibular fracture. Sometimes you can detect a lung apical mass or, uh, uh, or a pneumothorax. So don't, don't miss that. Uh, on the lateral radiograph, it is uh, very important to count till the C7 and T1. Sometimes there is hidden fractures here, not seen on the radiograph. Uh, this uh, what is called a mesh effect. This is a uh, air shadow. Uh, as we said also in the mandibular uh, radiograph, to differentiate between the air shadow and the fracture lines. Here also, this is a, this line is a air shadow, not a true fracture lines. You see here can come in the tip, can come on the base. Here it is the longitudinal. This is from the incisors, the tooth, the frontal tooth. So be aware of it. Another thing you should be aware uh, that uh, in uh, in elderly patient, uh, osteoporotic changes like osteophytes or calcified ligaments. You should be aware also, not to mention as a fractures. Now we will go to the fractures of the cervical vertebrae. This is the C1 uh, fractures named uh, Jefferson fracture. You see there is a lateral displacement of the lateral mass of C1, not aligned anymore with the lateral border of the C2. And here you see the distance between it and the big are increased. Another thing you, you can detect that uh, the distance between the dense and the anterior arch of C1, we said that it should be less than three millimeters in adult. Here it is increased. Uh, the most common cause here is a rheumato uh, rheumatoid arthritis. We should inform the referring physician about this finding because if this patient will undergo any uh, uh, surgeries, the 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 anesthesia doctor should be aware of this because uh, if he go into intubation, uh, he can uh, compress the cervical spinal cord and this will be a very dangerous process to the patient. Another uh, sequelae of the rheumatoid arthritis patient uh, is called a basilar invagination. You see here the dense will go uh, into the skull through the foramen magnum. It it will compress the spinal cord and the medulla. It is emergency also. Uh, here in the open mouth view, this is a rheumatoid patient. Uh, you can see here the lateral mass of C1. There is erosions here and not smooth like in normal patients. You, uh, you can see here uh, the lateral masses are totally uh, not seen and the dense here has many erosions. There is a differential for uh, this radiograph, like uh, metastasis in the C1, the lateral mass. Don't, uh, don't miss it. Another, another type of fractures here is the C2, the dense, the odontoid big is fractured here. You can see the anterior line and posterior line are broken. The Harris ring, also it is broken. So it is uh, emergency, it is dangerous fracture. Here again, the normal Harris ring. This is a normal radiograph and this is the uh, fractured dense, see? This is open mouth view for, for the dense fracture. This is a fracture. You can see it is not aligned and there is a space widened from the fractured part and the mother bone not like the mesh effect of the air shadow. This is called a hangman fracture of the C2. This is also a dangerous fracture. Uh, this one on the tip uh, of the vertebral body is called an uh, extension teardrop. You can, uh, you can see the anterior longitudinal line 
is disrupted, but the other lines, other two lines are intact. So it is a stable uh, fracture, the extension teardrop. It occurred more on the upper cervical vertebrae. The other fracture of it is a flexion teardrop. It occurred more on the lower cervical vertebrae. And this is a dangerous fracture be because it can compress the spinal cord. And you can see here more than a uh, fracture, one on the anterior compartment and one on the posterior compartment. So this is unstable fracture. Again, this is a flexion teardrop fracture. Here you can see the fractured part. Uh, it seems to be like the extension teardrop, but again, you should check the other lines here. The posterior longitudinal line is disrupted and the spinal laminar also disrupted. The facet joint is uh, widened, so it is uh, unstable fracture. Uh, another simple fracture, but uh, sometimes it is missed that the spinous process fracture, especially if it comes on the lower cervical vertebrae, you, you can easily miss it. Again, uh, this is an extension teardrop fracture here. You can see the posterior longitudinal line is intact. Only one line is disrupted, so this is stable. But don't miss the spinous process fracture here in the lower cervical vertebrae. In the rapid reporting exam, uh, only one fracture will come. But uh, in real life, you can face uh, any, anything like this, even in viva. It can come uh, multiple fractures, radiographs can easily come in the vibe. So don't miss and don't satisfy your search by finding only one pathology and ignoring the rest. Uh, this is inadequate lateral. As I said before, you should count all the vertebrae. This is C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. Where is the C7? This is not seen. You should uh, re-examine the patient and uh, redo this uh, radiograph. When we did it again, the, there was a fracture and the C6. We can easily miss from the first radiograph. This is a simple vertebral body fracture here in the C4, decreased height. Another dangerous type of uh, fractures you should be aware is the uh, pear-shaped facet. You should check the facet in each vertebrae. This is aligned facet joint. Uh, this also aligned, this aligned. Oops, where is this joint? You can see uh, in zoomed view, it is not aligned. The, the facet, the inferior facet is behind the superior facet. And you can see here, there is more than 25 to 50% of displacement. So this is unstable and dangerous fracture. Another example of it, you can see here. Also, this is the uh, displacement more than 50%. Uh, this one is only a unilateral facet dislocation. You should be aware of the difference between it and the bilateral. You can see only one facet is not aligned, but the other facet is aligned and the displacement is less, less than 25%. Here again, a comparison for both unilateral and bilateral. See, there is mild alignment still in the facet joint and the displacement is small. Here, the displacement is more and both facets are interlocked. We will take some lesions in the cervical radiograph. The first one here is the soft tissue increased size. This may be due to brevertebral hematoma or brevertebral abscess. This is also a dangerous sign. Here you can find air leucency in the brevertebral space. Uh, it is not uh, uh, an abscess, the abscess will be localized, but this is a diffuse air leucency here, mostly due to esophageal rupture. You can also find a metallic foreign body here in the esophagus. Uh, this one is example of uh, ankylosing spondylitis. 
you will see ossification of the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments, what is called a bamboo spine. Uh, this uh, C2 is expanded, the posterior arch and the vertebral body itself is expanded. The first differential here should be an urismal bone cyst and you should go for further imaging. Another uh, example here is uh, TB, TB spondylitis. This vertebral body is collapsed, but the discs here are intact. Another, uh, another one is uh, leucent, multiple leucent lesions. You can see in the C2 and C3 vertebral bodies. Uh, also, you can see here in C4 and some, uh, somewhat on the C5. Uh, this is according to the clinical context. Mm -hmm. If the patient has a previous history of breast cancer, so you should go with MITS and restaging for this patient. If the patient is older age, uh, you should check for multiple myeloma. Uh, as we said, take care for, for, for the lung apices in the cervical uh, radiograph. Here we can see this is a right apical pneumothorax. This is the pleural line. Here also we can detect a left lung apical mass. It is very dangerous to miss these uh, lesions. Uh, here also we can uh, detect a left clavicle fracture. On this lateral radiograph, you can detect a mandibular fracture. So please don't miss. Now we will go, uh, talk about the thoracic spine. A brief anatomy also, this is the AB and this is the lateral. This is a dedicated spine uh, views. Uh, it is not seen clearly like this uh, in uh, chest uh, radiographs. Uh, here in the annotation, you, you can see the alignment and the disc spaces. You can see here the pedicles. Each vertebra has two pedicles. You should check. Also, you should check for the paraspinal lines. Sometimes there is masses or uh, extramedullar hematopoiesis. Uh, on the lateral here, also you should check for the alignment, the anterior and the posterior longitudinal lines and the vertebral heights. Not compressed. <clears throat> Here as on the view for the thoracic vertebrae, this is the vertebral B and this pedicle, this pedicle, especially in the thoracic, because it is mostly hidden, you should check for each vertebrae. Details all are seen. Uh, the, the fractures in the thoracic vertebrae is not so common, uh, but we can find here the wedge fracture in this thoracic vertebrae, loss, loss of height. Uh, here also there is a compression fractures. You can see only this, the anterior line is, uh, uh, is broken so it is stable fractures some lesions we can see here this is the absent pedicle here and also you can see here this is absent pedicle don't miss it i got one on my viva uh, here what is called the collapsed vertebrae totally collapsed vertebrae here called the uh, vertebra plana uh, in adult you should check for the meds uh, uh, you know, sickle cell disease, a uh, secular patient has multiple bone infarctions. So if you zoomed here on the thoracic vertebrae, you would see that H-shaped vertebrae here and superior and inferior in the blades are H-shaped vertebrae. Don't miss also uh, to check the rest of the film. Here you can see there is a gold bladder stone, easily missed if you concentrate only on the spine. Here you can see a right hilar mass, also easily missed. Okay, now we will go to the lumbar spine, a brief anatomy also again. This is the lumbar vertebrae and this is the sacrum, the anterior longitudinal line and posterior longitudinal line should be aligned, disc spaces. And another zoomed view, this is the pedicle. 
and this is the parse. You should check, especially in the number, because it is easily broken. Again, we should check for the pedicles for all the lumbar vertebrae. You should train yourself to check for it. it uh, you should also here check for the transverse processes. Uh, sometimes it, uh, it is broken and it is very hard to differentiate again from the air shadows. So you should tra train your eye. Here the longitudinal ligaments, the anterior longitudinal and the posterior one. And this is the ligamentum flava. The anterior column, middle column, posterior column. If uh, two columns are disrupted, so it is unstable fracture and you should immediately inform the referring physician because high liability of spinal cord injury. This is assumed the view for the Scotty dog appearance for the lumbar vertebrae, pedicle here, and this is the parse, we should check. Here what we said for the columns, this is the anterior, middle, and posterior. Here is a small fracture only in the anterior, so this is stable. Another fracture here only on the posterior spinal, uh, spinous process on the posterior column, so this is also stable. If the fracture extends to more than one column, so it is unstable. Like here, this is called a chance fracture, and this is a fracture in the anterior and the middle column. This is examples. This is anterior compression fracture. Only the anterior column is disrupted, so this is stable. It is more hard uh, on the AP radiograph. Also, uh, uh, you can check also, the, there is a slight loss of height in the fractured vertebrae. So you should check on the lateral also. This is what is called a burst fracture. The burst fracture, the anterior and the middle columns are disrupted. You can see if you draw the line of the posterior longitudinal ligament, there is a bony part compressing the spinal canal. So this, it is dangerous. Uh, this is what we call the chance fracture that goes from the anterior to the posterior column. Also, it is a dangerous fracture. Uh, take care for the transverse processes fractures. So it, you can see here it is away from the mother bone. See this, this one is air shadow. This one also is air shadow. Okay, take care. You should differentiate between them. This is insufficiency fractures, osteoporotic fractures. You can see the posterior longitudinal ligament is intact. This is what we call the pars interarticularis uh, fracture. And this uh, more, uh, uh, th there is a spondylolysis, the fracture of pars, and there is a spondylolysis anterior. There is a degrees, first and second and third, according to the degree of uh, lithesis. Lesions for the lumbar spine. Here again, don't miss this absent pedicle. Uh, this is signs of ankylosing spondylitis. This is the bamboo spine. You should check for the fracture, chuck stick fractures. This is the dagger sign. Here, the interspinous ligament is uh, ossified. This is the Romanus lesions that uh, in the corner, shiny corners. Okay. Uh, this is uh, called Sherman disease. In the in the blades, there is erosions in the middle part of the in the blades. This, uh, like what uh, Dr. Mahmoud said, osteopetrosis, bone within bone. This is a Roger Jersey spine in the renal osteodystrophy context. This is, uh, like we said, in the thoracic vertebrae, the sickle cell disease, H shaped vertebrae. Another lesion here is a benign one, hemangioma, has a cordory appearance. This is longitudinally arrayed lines. This one is ivory vertebra. You can see on the sclerotic mids or lymphoma or budget sometimes. This one is a collapsed vertebrae. In young age, we called it a vertebra plana or mids. <laughs> a brief anatomy for the pelvis. You can see here the, the iliac bones, the sacroiliac joints, the obturator foramina, the hip. In the pelvis, you should Trace the rings. This is the obturator rings. This is the interior pelvic ring. 
all of them should be smooth and intact. This is a closed view, view for the sacroiliac joints. This is a symphysis view. You should train your eye for the normal radiographs to detect the abnormality if it is existed. This is the sacral arcs. It should be smooth. We should trace carefully here. This is a zoomed view on the hip. This is what is called the iliopectineal line. And this is the ischial line. And this one is the teardrop. Some fractures here, you can see the, the right obturator ring is disrupted due to the fractured superior and inferior pubic uh, rami. Another superior pubic rami fracture here, here the superior and the inferior. In the pelvis, uh, like the mandible, it is a ring, so you should check for all the fractures. Here, the disruption for the symphysis pubis. Here, disruption of the sacroiliac joint. Here, uh, you can see there is a widening of the right sacroiliac joint. And this is the normal left one. This is a diastasis for the symphysis pubis. This is the sacral arcs fractures. See, it is not smoothly aligned, like here. This is the acetabular fracture. OK. This is the also a stabilum fracture. This is diastasis here. This is a superior biomic rimae fracture. This is a sacral fracture. So don't satisfy your search. Again, there is a right iliac fracture here, right superior and inferior, left superior and inferior biomic rimae. This one also left sacroiliac joint is white. Don't satisfy your search. Some lesions you can see in the pelvis. This is a sclerotic bone mitts. This one is called budget. You see the ilioischial and iliopectineal line are thick. Lost teardrop. This is a vertebrae also seems to be sclerotic. This is a calcified urinary bladder, more common in schistosomiasis. This one, you can see the sacroiliac joints, both are fused. This is in the context of ankylosing spondylitis. This one, don't miss the sacrum. It is hidden. You should start to see the sacrum in each pelvis radiograph, because if you don't do that, you will miss it. Here, there is a lytic lesion, no sacral arcs. You can see on the left side. Again, here is a sclerotic lesion. Here, you can find a lytic lesion in the right iliac bone. Compare with the left side, the ring here is disrupted. Here you can see a small lytic lesion in the left iliac above the acetabulum. Don't miss these lesions. Uh, the rest of the pelvis, we will discuss the abulsion fractures in the pediatrics, and we will discuss also the hip and femoral abnormalities on the lower limb section. I hope this helped you in your preparation. Thanks to Dr. Mahmoud again, and thanks to all of you, and have a nice time. Time to start the quiz. Just one minute rest, and uh, because anyway, it will discontinue. So uh, we will continue in the same link, inshallah. Uh, Uh, so we come back. Uh, we don't have uh, much time, but just to uh, try to apply what uh, Dr. Mahmoud mentioned in the presentation, which is very interesting and very amazing, mashallah. And uh, as usual, he uh, prepared uh, it very well. Uh, so let's uh, go with our stars today. And uh, and we are in rapid reporting, so be careful. So we change the strategy now. It is not the first uh, session. It is the last session. So we are in rapid reporting. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, see here, you can see carefully that uh, there is 
uh, fracture. I don't know if it is uh, clear or not. So I just try to show you. Uh, the, the fracture is here, is my mouse, yeah? Apparently here, yes. So the fracture, okay, is a bit, yeah, L1. So uh, what do you think? What do you think? Maybe we'll try to make some zooming. Sorry. Uh, my computer is a bit slow. Yeah. So what do you think here? Anterolithesis, perfect. Don't satisfy. One more finding. Did you see? Look in the spinous process. Here, here, here. Yes, so don't satisfy. Uh, so sometimes in the exam, they show you uh, other positions and uh, try to be يعني, used to, uh, to see this. And if you go with the line here, I think you will find there is, again, anterolithesis here. Yeah. Okay, so be careful of this. Uh, I think better to rotate the image if you find one like this in the exam, better to rotate to the ordinary one you can see in your normal practice. Yes. What is usually our oh, yes, your, your practice exactly? And uh, here I will try to make some zooming. So we have many stars. We are waiting. Someone will pick up the finding. So good to see the lines. Then and to write thesis of S1 over S2. Yes, perfect. S1 of S2. I'll try to help you to show you the normality. <clears throat> we have about five minutes just to show you some cases that uh, usually it, it shown the exam, yeah. So at one to axial subluxation, the distance here increased. So this is typical case of at one to axial subluxation. So this patient with anterior column, middle column, and also maybe posterior column, we are talking about perist fracture, perfect perist fracture. And uh, one of the difficult shoya in the exam that you should be uh, to be used to check the EB and to check the vertical distance of the, uh, the vertical height of the vertebrae in a proper manner. And here you can note that there is discrepancy in this one. So again, there is fracture of L1. But don't fear from this uh, radiographs. In the exam, it will come on the lateral and AP views. In the, it, never yes. can, it never come in this AP only. Yes. Maybe in Viva it can come, but on Rabbit, never come like that. Yes. Try a difficult again, but I think is uh, you concentrate, you focus, you can pick up the finding. So 
So the distance here is asymmetrical. And if you remember, Dr. Mahmoud mentioned something about the, the line between C1 and C2. You remember this in the open mouth view? So there is a fracture, yes, of C1. Why? Because this, you can see that this extrusion outside the confinement of C2, yeah. And also the distance between the dense and lateral masses is asymmetrical. Yes, perfect. In the exam, better don't say uh, names. If you are not sure, or maybe it will make you uh, a bit. Even, even if you are sure, don't mention. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so the exam stress will make you write uh, anything strange, like metatarsal instead of metacarpal, uh, right instead of left. These are common mistakes. So don't mention any name. Nice. Yes, mokish, perfect. This one needs uh, some zooming. I will try to make it. If you check the vertebrae and you go to the C2, what you'll find, yeah, dense fracture, don't do it. Again, odontoid fracture. Okay. Um, okay. I think I will skip some of this. And uh, okay. So again, there is enteroithesis here. In the AB, uh, is a bit difficult. But if you look carefully in the spinous process, you will find that there is something going in the C C6. Uh, C then when you go here, you can find the uh, displacement of uh, C6, and I think there is facet here. I think this is better uh, example of uh, unilateral facet. There is unilateral facet look. I will try to show you more typical one. So again, there is unilateral facet lock. See, you can distract it here by the osteophyte fractures. It is a common uh, radiograph on the rapid reporting that you bring the a distractor film. You are distracted here and you are saying this is a fracture, not a fracture, and you miss the real pathology. This is projection, it is not real. If someone asks about this, no, it is not. Uh, I can, I will show you the edontoid because uh, if you go back a few slides, I will show you the edontoid, how it looks when it's fractured. For example, this one, or you can see the misalignment here, or this one. For the odontoid fracture, even subtle, you will find that like there is malalignment. So it's not uh, it's not difficult like the facet. Facet is more difficult. Um, this one, I think uh, maybe. Again, compression fracture. This one. Yes, you can see the AB. Uh, that's what I, uh, Dr. Mahmoud, also mentioned. 
that is a bit difficult, but if you concentrate even with the gaseous distension and the colonic loading, you'll find the lower end plate here is veiled. Uh, you cannot, and but here you can see that the height is reduced compared to this one, which is clearly visible. So in this case, you can go through this. Uh, as he mentioned in the viva, he can show you something like this, and uh, more maybe more wide abdominal radiograph. Then you will you will be tired from searching. Then finally, it is this one. But uh, I think in rabbit, if uh, it come only abdominal radiograph, it be like that. Yeah. I think better not to overcall fractures like this. Yes. If you want uh, you to diagnose a vertebral body fracture, he will bring both the, uh, the lateral yeah. and the yeah. So, yeah. Uh, because we are afraid from the overcalling of the rabbit, so don't rely on it only, on the AP only. This is an example for chance fracture. And this is obvious for the Bars fracture? Is it bars fracture, do you think? Anterolithesis, yes. And lithesis, yes. If you if you mentioned only this is a bars fracture, I think you will get only half mark. Yes. So you should mention anterolithesis as well. Um, a lot of time, a lot of uh, examples for compression fractures. Maybe Doctor would mention. Uh, uh, maybe this one. It will be interesting. I don't know if it is obvious or not, but maybe you can make it the end case today with one of uh, brilliant stars. You will pick up this finding. Yeah, what is in the prevertebral soft tissue? Yeah, what is it? Yes, so there is a foreign body. Yeah, foreign body, perfect. So we have many brilliant stars today. Uh, so I think we, we can come to the end of session today. I uh, hope it uh, can be helpful. And uh, I think uh, if you give us uh, your feedback, we will be also thankful to you and uh, Inshallah, we can continue next Sunday. And uh, I will send you also the link or the back in the chat. And have a good uh, night and uh, enjoy. And um, may Allah make it uh, fine for everyone and beneficial for everyone. And uh, it's important also to mention that to make uh, yani a good uh, niya or intention. Uh, before you study for this, uh, because you will spend lot, lots of, uh, much time in your uh, life studying and making this to for so make uh, something that it give you uh, inshallah and thawab or in your life. Thank you for all and uh, have a good night. Assalamualaikum.